what's this week look like scheduling officers? Yeah, we've made some adjustments. I'd rather keep it kind of in-house, um, just, you know, in case somebody's listening to this, so. Um, but definitely had to adjust the schedule. Wait, so last week you couldn't tell us because you were focused on the Patriots, and now this week you can't tell us because you're keeping your entire Yeah, I, I just think it's such an adjustment in terms of, and I think a lot of it is who handles this trip the best is going to be able to play to the best of their ability. So um, this is my, I know from my own experience, and we've had a lot of coaches on our staff that have been over there before and done it certain ways, and, um, you know, I'm not saying what we're doing is right. We think, obviously, it's the right thing to, to do, but, um, you know, there, there are a lot of adjustments you got to make. Do you or any of your staff remember having done it wrong where you felt like you didn't handle the week very well and it showed in the game? Um, yeah, I think you just – I don't want to say wrong. Um, listen, I've been on both sides of it. We've gone over there – with the Rams and one, we, we went over there with the Titans and we lost a close game right at the end. Um, so, you know, I think there's things that you can you you kind of reflect upon and, and thought that maybe we could have handled something a little bit better. But bottom line is you, you got to be disciplined in whatever it is you're going to do and just to try to show up and be the best version of, of you on, on game day. Hey, Matt, so just so we're, we're clear, you don't – want to say what day you're leaving even at this point, right? Like, well, we are leaving on Thursday. Okay. I didn't want to say anything. Yeah, was, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, that's fine. No, we're leaving on Thursday. And um, so we get there Friday morning pretty early, and we'll just kind of handle it from there. This is such a different week than any that a lot of these guys have had. What, what are the things that you've learned from from your past experience that can help? Well, I think it's, a, a, again, a lot and just the approach you take, uh, the preparation is going to be absolutely critical in terms of, especially the mental preparation, because you're going to be out of rhythm in terms of just your schedule, uh, the practice schedule. Um, and you try to keep it as normal as possible, like a, a typical week. But let's face it, it's, it's anything but. So, um, you know, and then what's going to be different about, I would say, this experience and not, not trying to get ahead or anything like that, but just what we have after that as well, um, in terms of not having a buy afterwards. I've never experienced that. So there's gonna be a little bit of learning, just, uh, you know, I would say coming away from this thing in terms of just how you best handle it for, you know, the future as well. Was that a, was that a conversation that you, I, if, unless I'm misunderstanding it, the league gives you the option? Basically, yeah. Time. So what was that? Again, not getting ahead of yourself, but why did you guys turn it down and say we'd rather have it later? Well, I think a lot of the teams this year have done yeah. that. Um, I think just kind of where, you know, obviously it's a long season. I think, um, you know, one factor I would say is having the third preseason game and then having that that weekend off. Um, there's, I would say that's kind of a mini buy right there. Um, and it just, it's fallen early in the season. So you have to make a decision on what you think is best. And we opted for a little bit later of a buy. Now, I wasn't necessarily anticipating it where we, we got it, but it is what it is. And we'll, we'll try to schedule the best we can. And that, did Yasha's illness kind of disrupt your rotation plan with David at left tackle? And did he go longer than you anticipated? And if so, you know, is, is the progression on track in your eyes and on where he's going? Yeah, I, I think, again, we're going to be fluid with it. Um, I don't want to say it necessarily impacted it. Um, you know, David, what we had planned on was going two series, and then Yash was going to go. Um, and, you know, we got into halftime, and Dave just said, I'm going. So, and I thought he was playing pretty well. So we, we let him, we let him go, and... Uh, we'll see where he's at. I haven't talked to him today, or, but we'll see where he's at throughout the course of the week. And I, I do think we're going to be fluid with that. You know, obviously, I've said it before. I think we have a lot of confidence in Yash and his ability to go out there and perform at a high level. So, um, 
you know, it's just going to be real fluid, and it, it could be a week-to-week -week type deal. With that confidence with Josh, does he need to play right tackle for you guys to get your best five on the field? Uh, I think potentially that, that is something that we've definitely talked about, and we'll continue to do the best job we can in terms of uh, repping these guys throughout the course of the week and practice. And, um, you know, but that, is, that has definitely been something we've talked about. We haven't made a decision on that yet. Rashawn is one of the leading sackers in the league so far this year. What do you think is clicking for him right now? Well, I think uh, anytime you just look at, and we we try to look at more pressures than sacks, um, but I think everything plays a hand in that. It's just all eleven guys complementing each other, and I think Rashawn. The one thing you know you're going to get every time he lines up out there is he's going to go hundred miles an hour, um, and he's been he's been pretty disruptive. I'd say he was obviously uh, our player of the game um, this this past game, and made some, some key, key plays for us. But I think in order to get those sacks, you know, you got to have good coverage on the back end. Um, although the one, I would say that his first sack, he got there uh, pretty quickly. I don't, I don't even know if they had a chance for the play to develop. He was around the edge so quick. But, and then also just, you know, uh, playing off the, guy, the other guys that are up front. And we're lucky we've got a lot of guys, you know, Kenny Clark, uh, Preston, Jay Reed showing up quite a bit. Those guys are, are being disruptive as well. It's a long plane ride to London. I've never been there myself, but it's not are a you going? long trip. I am going, okay. yes. If you can tell me how to deal with the jet lag, I'd appreciate that. But, uh, with Dave and, and Elton and Robert, guys that are, are recently back from ACLs, is there any concern with, with that saying, spending that much time in, in Play and anything you do to combat that? Uh, yeah, there's some things that we can do to combat that, uh, that we'll, we'll try to do everything we can. So um, it is a long flight, but it's like that for both teams, and we both have the same kind of set of circumstances. After, after you looked at the film, was there anything, anything specific you put your finger on as far as what was going on with the run defense? Oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot um, in terms of just I think we got to, uh, quite frankly, I think we got to play more physical. Um, you know, we can't just sit back and, and catch. And then sometimes, and this is something that I, I talked to Joe about in terms of just, you know, we as much as possible, we, we'd like to hold a two shell. And sometimes we might have to come out of it, um, it especially if, if we are pretty fairly confident that a team's going to run the ball. And then also if guys, and I think you saw it, really, I thought for the for the most part, our defense played pretty solid. Uh, obviously, the first drive was not up to our standard, and then they had there was two drives in the second half. I think the eighth and ninth drive of the game, um, where they were able to just move the ball down the field and capitalized with with the two touchdowns. Um, but I thought outside of that, and again, it, I think what was it nine of eleven drives? There were seven punts, a field goal, a takeaway. So that, that was good. It's just the consistency, I would say, in terms of. And then the one thing, and I, I think this was a, t a team issue, uh, myself, <laughs> as much as anybody, just discipline. You know, we had some uncharacteristic mistakes that, that you typically haven't seen from, from us. Um, certainly, the challenge was, was awful. It was a bad challenge. Um, I think, you know, Kenny Clark got a personal foul in a situation where it's second and 18. Um, obviously, we had the, the other penalty late in the game in a critical situation uh, by Tyreek. That, that can't happen. we we got to keep our poise and um, just try to make good decisions and take emotion out of it. Matt, will uh, Kylan Hill start to practice this week? Potentially. Um, I haven't gotten a, a real good update yet. Back to Yash, um, I don't remember his rookie year so much, but I'm thinking about the last few years, I, I feel like he's only played left tackle or the vast majority of his snaps he's in training camp. Um, so we don't get to see what goes on behind closed doors now, but has he had a lot of right tackle experience, or I should say much at all? Yeah, we've wrapped him. I guess that, that, with the uncertainty with Dave, though, I would, is it 
more than a handful of snaps. I, I, I guess I'm just thinking because there's been such uncertainty with Gabe that maybe he's just been stationed over there, and it would be hard to get him repped yeah. on the right side to make that change. There's a lot of that, but, you know, we, we try to do our best to cross-train these guys as much as possible, especially up front. Is there much time for that in the regular season, cross-training? Because it's so game. Well, the, the reps are so limited. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you just you got to do it and make the best of it. Matt, is there some value to having to, to grind out a game and find ways to win, especially when you get into January and February? Yeah, I think so. The more ways you can win, and ultimately that's, that's all that matters is uh, you, you find a way and certainly – um, you got to learn along the way, and you got to improve. And you can't have some of the mistakes we made in this past game show up, you know, five, six, seven, eight weeks, or at the end of the season. Um, I, you know, uh, you got to continually learn, grow, improve, and um, so it, it, it is a good opportunity to make sure that we we're not going to gloss over any of that, you know. Um, and you got to give New England a ton of credit. They played more discipline. I, I thought, uh, you know, it's just we knew it was going to be a tough game. But uh, certainly I think there's some things that we can control that we can do a better job with. You mentioned before the Patriots game, the unknowns that, coming, that come with playing against Coach Belichick and the challenges with that. Did that factor into the passing game in the first half and uh, just the issues with that? And did you make any – or what adjustments were made? Yeah, there was there was a couple things that um, you know I wish we, we could have definitely executed better in a, in a couple situations, and then there was a couple situations where um, you know we I think we had a second and three, uh, I think it was the three and out. We had a second and three. Uh, we had just called the timeout. They they kind of did a non normal match in terms of they had their base defense. We had eleven personnel out there. We went to twelve personnel and decided to call a pass. And they, they had a great call on. They, they brought a pressure off the edge. We got beat on the inside, but they played a two shell behind it, which wasn't great for the concept. And we lost our flat control with the back having to board. Um, that, that was a bad play call. And I was like, man, I wish we could have put a can on it and, and uh, got us into a better play for that situation. So there was, there was, it was I would say it was all of the above in terms of. There's some things that we definitely can execute better, but there's some things that where I didn't do a very good job of putting our guys in a good position to have success. Is there anything that you say to Romeo, maybe that's after the game, days after, about you know not securing the football in the end zone and how he can you know put himself in a position to bring that in? Yeah, I think it's just uh, there's definitely things that we we coach him up on. Um, you know, bottom line is if you're going to the ground, you got to survive the ground. And otherwise, it's going to be an incomplete pass. And um, but yeah, there are techniques that you can do to try to avoid that. Did you grade that as a drop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's we expect him to make that play, and I think he expects himself to make that play. And but what I love about Rome is it he didn't get down from it, and you know handling adversity is a big part of this. Uh, of being the best player you can be. And, uh, you know, I thought he did a nice job rebounding from the fumble early in the game as well. And I told him right after that, I said, hey, you got to secure that football better, but we're going to come right back to you. So shake it off. And I think he did that. And I thought there were some tough yards we got on that final drive where Aaron flipped the ball out to him and on some of those run, run solutions. And I thought he did a really good job. I thought New England, of, of all the teams we played this year, attacked the football better than anybody in terms of, of punching at it, raking at it. Uh, it showed up on, on numerous clips of us, whether it was the running backs running the ball, whether it was receivers. Um, they did a really good job with that. And we all know the connection that Aaron and Randall have. But have you had a guy during your time I don't want to say automatic on third down or a third down specialist, but a guy that seems to have that connection when the chips are on the table for third down. And what does that do for you as a play caller? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think we've had experience with that here in the past and then with multiple other teams. But, um, 
Yeah, I know. Definitely. You, 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 the one thing that when Kabi's number's called, you can count on him to do it exactly the way it's supposed to be done. And he's super reliable, super consistent, especially in those critical situations. That was a um, his third down conversion late in the game, and then the one to Alan Lazard to start the second half. Those were two of the biggest plays that we made all day on offense in terms of just keeping the chains moving and, and giving us an opportunity to go down and score. Just in terms of better trying to conceptualize how different this week is, does the preparation for Sunday physically start much earlier in, in this week than it does in a, a regular game week? You want to skip the plan? I'm trying. I know you are. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I think everything you do from from you know the moment yet last night or the game ended last night to up until kickoff absolutely matters. So our guys are going to have to be super disciplined and and make sure that they're taking care of them themselves so we can put our best ball out there on Sunday. On that last punt in regulation, I got, this is actually from a couple of fans. Was there a thought to um, fair catching that for a free kick at the end? There was. There was. Do you not you're not following me? Just like was there more to that conversation or was it just like No, I'm not gonna give away our game plan. Um, I just said that in certain situations you might have to put an extra defender in the box. You know. But I think one thing I love about our defense is we do hold a shell for the majority of the time and it's it makes it a little bit more difficult for quarterbacks to, to, you know, um, ID what you're trying to do from a coverage standpoint. But at the same time, when it is single high and, and you're holding a two shell, your guy's a little bit later to get there in the run support. So um, there may be a time or two where we have to have to break it in order to uh, get an extra guy up in there. Why not try the, the Hail Mary there at the end of the fourth quarter? And it was that discussed, and, and, and why not go with the Hail Mary there? Yeah, we, I mean, it's just, yeah, it was discussed. Everything, everything's discussed. Um, there's certainly some more discussion, I'm sure, that after when we watch it all together, too, in terms of maybe something we could do. Um, obviously, having the penalty in that situation definitely hurt us. Since we're going so far beyond the two questions. I know, right? Um, well, they're supposed to protect me up here. Yeah. Um, since you took such ownership of the replay call uh, and you did win the game, did any of your coaches give you a hard time since then? Like, did they give you any grief at all? Or no. Connor didn't say? No. Connor was dead right, though. We talked, I, I talked about it again with him this morning, and uh, he was pretty adamant yesterday, and so it's. We're lucky we got a great one up there for us, and he knows all the rules inside and out. And um, you know, he he does a great job.